body of Christ this day. Pastor Laurel we will return from her pilgrimage this Wednesday, May 25th. If you have a pastoral emergency outside of our office, our office hours, please contact Bev. Her phone number can be found in the bulletin today. Today we have a guest preacher, Rob Lowe. He's the director of Justice Ministries at the Pittsburgh Presbytery, so let's all make him feel welcome today. Vacation I need to add a uh, safe room for clapping after my <laughs> Vacation Bible School is coming up very quickly, as you all know, and you've all heard every week. I have come up here and talked about it. Registration for three-year-old three to children in the fifth grade is going on now. It will be July 18th to the 22nd, 9 a.m. to 12.30, so mark your calendars. We're also looking for volunteers for BBS that can help in any way, such as leading groups, cleanups, and if you're artistic, please come help us decorate the church the Sunday before BBS. There's an online form to sign up, or you can just call me verbally. And today is the last Sunday to sign up for the Hoiso to benefit their mission trip to the Philadelphia this year for the youth. There will be Italian ham, turkey, and provolone hoagies for $8, and all money and orders are due by the 25th. You can also put on tithe leave, send us a check, or... Give us cash whenever you're available before the 25th, and they'll be available for pickup on June 5th after the graduation Sunday. <laughs> Nonsense. The form is downstairs by Finley Hall. We'll be collecting for the Pentecost special offering through June 5th as well. The Pentecost offering connects us with children, youth, and young adults, and offers them opportunities to build a foundation of faith. You can make a donation on Sundays by using the envelopes found in the pews today by sending a check directly to the church or by using our tithe layout, but be sure to write PSO on the memo line. This Wednesday was our last kids club for the spring after summer break. It will return in September. And on June 5th, like I already said, we'll be honoring our 2022 graduate graduates during the worship service on Sunday, June 5th. And following worship, Jody Colby will be selling the fair trade coffee that benefits the mission work at the U.S.-Mexico border. So see Jody make and purchase any coffee. Are there any announcements that I may have missed today? Okay. Let us remember why we are here today. Let us focus our hearts and our minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we light the Christ candles. Let us Let's pray. Holy God, I ask you that you bless all of those everywhere who are trying to cross barriers to share the grace of Jesus with those who do not know you. Help them know that they are bringing you joy and anticipating the praise that surrounds you in glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let all the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Please join me in Stand at Able for the Tim God is Here, number 461.
heart to be troubled, but confess your sins, and God will give you peace. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. Loving God, we confess that we deny your blessing and fail to keep your word. Forgive us, we pray, for the least of all our sins, that we might live in peace and reflect your love in the world. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Let your hearts be still, for God loves you and forgives all your wrongdoing. Beloved, receive the peace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Our New Testament reading today is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised, uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from, he from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, eat and kill. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has cleansed you must not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to me from Cicero. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brethren also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he and the angel standing in this house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as it had in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they were glorified, and they glorified God, saying, then to the Gentiles as also God granted repentance unto life. The word of the Lord. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be with all of you this beautifully warm morning. Uh, I just bring, I want to bring greetings from all the leadership staff at the military, Dr. Reverend Sorge. Uh, Reverend Brian Wallace and our state of prayer, Carla Campbell. We pray for our churches every Tuesday. We have Bible study and worship every Tuesday morning. And we pray for our churches and we pray for this church and all our churches in the Presbytery. So I uh, bring greetings from all of them. Uh, I am a little saddened today. My buddy, Bill Gracie, is not here today. <laughs> so you guys don't know this, but his, his beautiful wife does. But Bill is my guy. He is my go to for all the things that I need in this area. He's a mentor, he's a wonderful man, and I was looking forward to seeing him this morning. <laughs> but that's okay. We're sending my love, please. Okay. I'll be bar heads in prayer. Holy God, you are wonderful and loving. When we ask at this time, is that your word? be heard in clarity, that it blesses us in a way that we listen with our hearts, listen with our minds, so that we may apply it to our lives, that we may be strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My dad always had these sayings growing up, and they were important because they were life stamped sayings. He loved them. One of the sayings he would say is sometimes in life in order to understand something or for the message or lesson to be unknown, you need to experience it twice. You must experience it twice in order for you to understand and listen. So, for me it may be changing a fixture in a bathtub. The second time I do it, I fumble through it, I learn how to do it, so by the third time, I know how to do it. Back in the day when there was no GPS, if you got lost twice going to a new location, the third time you kind of knew because you'd already gotten lost twice on your way and you knew how to get to the location. So here's the saying that my dad would say, you can keep it for yourselves and use it anytime you want to. I give you permission. Are you ready? 
Seeing things double may keep you out of trouble. <laughs> Seeing things double may keep you out of trouble. Now friends, I have to say that my father was right. Now there are only a few times in the Bible where the entire narrative is repeated. And I think it's important because they are hinges in our Bible. One of them is the creation story, we're all familiar with those. The second is the Exodus story of the Israelites. Again, all are pivotal to the gospel narrative of God's people. So here we have another pivotal <coughs> point in the gospel narrative of God's people. In the previous chapter, chapter 10, we just read, uh, Kara just read chapter 11, chapter 10, the same story is presented in Luke. Friends, this is a crucial development in the early church. And I believe it's intentional of the author that so the reader didn't miss how important this was, again, for the, for, for the early church. So I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. Is there Cliff Notes still, by the way? Yes, yes there is. Yeah. I remember those from college. So I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of what we just heard. So a Gentile believer, Cornelius, has a vision or encounter with an angel and tells him to bring a Jewish believer, Simon Peter, to his house. Simon Peter has a vision or encounter with the Holy Spirit that tells him to go to this Gentile's house. Now, Peter goes to the men, to the, to the, with the men that were sent by Cornelius. He gives, and when he's there, he gives a first-hand account of the ministry, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus. And even before he finishes his sermon, the Holy Spirit has fallen on those who are listening. And Peter baptizes them and accepts from this invitation to stay at his house for a few days. But friends, there's a problem. It is unlawful for Peter to be associated with any of the Gentiles, of the uncircumcised people as you read in the scripture. Gentiles were thought of as second class citizens. No, worse than second class citizens. So Peter gets called out by the apostles and the circumcised believers. So friends, I imagine this conversation with Peter and the apostles and the other circumcised believers, scripture tells us, from this morning, they say to you, why do you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? You see, who you invite to your table, who you share food with, was of the utmost importance to those early church leaders. Seeing Peter be with the Gentiles, seeing this was a perceived threat their privileged position, the early church leaders. So I don't think the conversation with Peter and the apostles went like, hey Peter, come on in. Have, have a seat. Would you like some wine? We need to kind of talk about the situation you had in Caesarea where you sat down with the Gentiles and shared them. No, friends, I don't think that's how the conversation went. I think it was more like, Peter! How dare you sit and eat with those people? You can't let them think that they're one of us. They are not in with us. Yuck, that is disgusting. <clears throat> That's what the conversation was more likely like. See, I wanted to convey the significance of this feeling of revulsion experienced by the apostles and the circumcised believers. And as I thought about this, believe it or not, a movie came to mind. This movie, this critically acclaimed blockbuster movie sensation of 1994, The Little Rascals. <laughs> Has anyone seen The Little Rascals? Now, The Little Rascals are based on a short film series from the 40s, 50s, and 60s called Our Gang. Anyone, our Gang? Anyone remember the characters? 
characters from the Little Rascals are our game? Shout them out. Spanky. Spanky, yep. Yeah. Alfalfa. 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 Anyone else? Buckwheat. Buckwheat, yep. Yeah. Froggy. Froggy. Froggy with the throat. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Anyone else? Bullseye. Bulls, yes, thank you. Anyone else? How about Darla? Darla. Who could forget Darla? So in the movie, in 1994, we have Alfalfa, who is infatuated with Darla. He cannot stop thinking about her. He wants to spend all his time with Darla. But friends, there's a problem. And the problem is this. He belongs to an exclusive club. And that exclusive club is the He-Man Woman Haters Club. Yes, I said it right. The He-Man Woman Haters Club. Why do they hate girls? Because they don't know how to play and they smell weird. <laughs> girls, yuck, they say. Well, as the movie goes on, Alfalfa wants his sh to show his undying love for Darla. So, to show this love he has, he invites Darla to the clubhouse that they have for this he man woman haters club. They have a clubhouse every week. Just tell you. It's a serious club for them. So Alfalfa accepts. He actually makes a candlelit lunch for himself and Darla. Well, as you could imagine, chaos ensues. Spanky finds out. In order to cover up, he uh, Alfalfa covers up the table with the lunch on it and he burns the clubhouse down. So the entire movie is about them trying to get the materials to rebuild the clubhouse. Well, Spanky, who is the president of the Union Players <coughs> Club, is infuriated. He's beside himself. He's screaming at Alfalfa, how could you let her in this clubhouse? She is not one of us. She is one of them. Yuck. That is ridiculous. How could you do this? Can you hear the revulsion in Spanky's call out? She doesn't belong here. They don't belong here. Now, as ridiculous as that sounds, to have a club like that, because girls are awesome, those eight-year-old boys did not know any better. They thought that this was how things were supposed to be. Friends, I'm telling you that is what the apostles were saying to Peter. They don't belong. This is how things are supposed to be. These heroic church leaders might not have known better up until this point, but now... They do. Because the Holy Spirit, through the witness of Peter, showed the apostles and the circumcised believers that the barriers of separation between Jews and Gentiles must now be eradicated. Friends, I know sometimes in our culture and in our world, it seems like there are barriers that want to be put up between various separation between all of us. But we know better. We know that God's gift of redemption transcends all differences and all are within the embrace of God's love. So I'll ask all of you, what are the barriers that allow you to exclude your neighbors? Is it political parties? Is it race? Is it sexual orientation? Is it social status? Friends, we may not have clubhouses, but we surely do find ways to say, you are not one of us. The Little Rascals movie ends with the boys realizing how silly it was to exclude girls. How having them part of their club actually makes it better. Inclusion seems right as if this was the way it was supposed to be all along. I think the hope for this morning, friends, for all of us as individuals and for the church, in these days where there is so much dissension and division, unacknowledged privilege and separation, is that the spirit and her work of healing and reconciling is among us. 
We need to be open to the Spirit's works, inviting her to change the lens of our hearts because we do know better. Change happens. Our hearts respond when we are open to the Spirit's work in our lives, allowing us to see the Spirit at work in the stories of others and recognizing that same Spirit at work in their lives. Just like Peter. Once he shared his testimony as the witness to God's work, the apostles didn't respond with, you're out of your mind, this is wrong. No. They responded with, how can we broaden the table so everyone has a place? It's taken them a while. 2,000 years later, we're still having this fight. But we're moving in the right direction because we know better. Friends, my point here is this, and I'm going to sit down. My wife always thought I get long winded when I preach, so I'm going to sit down with promise. But my point here is this. In our homogeneous communities, we need witnesses. No, better. You need to be a witness, showing something new, something better, something significant. Inclusion as Christ has shown us all as Gentiles. Earlier, I shared one of my dad's sayings. Does anyone remember what it was? It was just 10 minutes ago. Thank you. Seeing things double may keep you out of trouble. The author of Acts Luke wants the reader to know, to understand this pivotal, transformative moment in the early church formation by retelling this story twice. One that reshapes the gospel story forever. Friends, you, all of you sitting here today, have the opportunity to be the pivotal, transformative point through the Holy Spirit in the gospel story of today to be the witness like Peter. And it is as simple as being open to the Spirit. Amen.
worried about formula, and she's off. Uh, she's not using formula. She's nursing and also taking a bottle on her own. Thank you for sharing. Some prayers for my daughter's family, Amanda. Um, uh, two of her family members have COVID. The symptoms are not so bad right now, but they're very worried about the three-year-old that's not vaccinated.
face of door to the outside if you're able. This is to remind us that the mission field is outside of these four walls. We can be a community that sticks together in these, inside these four walls. But we are called to be the light of Christ outside of these walls. To bear witness to his love and grace to the world in a way that the gospel requires of all of us. To be the witness, as Peter was in the scripture for this morning, in this world. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever you may send. He may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.